Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JNS Hobbies and Crafts and I have another mini album tutorial for you. And it features the Graphic 45 Bird Song Deluxe Collector's Edition paper pack. And this was a lot of fun. So first thing about this is the finished size is seven and one eighth by about nine and a quarter inches with a three and three quarter inch spine. And this is a album that has the swing latch closure on the sides. And if you are a beginner, you can make this. And if you're not a die cutter, you can make this. So I give a few options on the cover design for those of you that do not have this die. And if you do not have circle stencils, I kind of give you a tip on how you can get around that as well. So what I want to say about this though is that you'll have plenty of leftover paper, decorated paper, to make your picture mats. We don't do the picture mats in the tutorial together or the folders. And the reason why we don't do the picture mats in this is because everybody has their own size photos that they like to print out. So this does have the swing latch and it doesn't matter if your latch swings this way like mine or if it swings the other way. So let's just get into this. So one thing you're going to notice about this is it's a takeoff from my Around the World album with several changes of measurements to accommodate this paper pack. This has a lot of pages in it. In fact, if you read this like a book, page one, two, three, and so forth, it's about 12 pages. So there is a lot in here. Let's start here, page one. So what we did was we created a little folder that kind of dangles off our little string here. It's really cute. Put some photos in there. And then we have a large pocket back here. And I've just made some photo mats. And it all just kind of slides on back in there. Over here, we have a fold out and it's magnetic and it just kind of folds out this way, comes this way, and over here we have a pocket and a tuck area. And I use this kind of like a little tag or so. And I've got another tag in this pocket. And you can get a photo mat in there if you wanted. Just slide that all in there. Over here what we have is kind of like a side waterfall and they are different sizes, so for different size photos. And I put a free floating picture mat in there. And you can place your photos right in here too. It just all latches back. Okay, our next page. Page three. Here we have used a brad and some of the chipboard pieces from the collection. And this just slides so you can open this up. And you can place a photo right here. You can place a photo here. And here is a pocket. And this here you can tuck back behind it like I did with the tag. And I put a couple picture mats in there. Looks like I got a folder in here. So I think the colors came out really nice uh, in this design and I hope that you like it too. Over here we just have a large side pocket and I was able to get a lot of picture mats in here. And I created another folder. Going to our next page. So this is a fun one. This is actually a magnetic flip and then folds out. Up here we have a little tuck area. You can even tuck back behind that. And I just have some tags and a little photo mat. So this is going to flip up for us and give us a place for photo. We have here, we open that up and we open this up and we got a pocket over here and we have another fold out and I put a free floating picture mat and you can place photos in here. Here's the pocket and this created we created a tuck here 
And I just tucked a few of these for some tags and a little photo mat there. And here is a photo mat right in that pocket. And it just kind of all folds back. And slide your stuff in there. Over here, this is a magnetic little folder and it just kind of opens up to place your photos. Back here, we can tuck back behind for some picture mats and I have a large one in there. And you can also place a photo right here. Going to our next page, we have a very large pocket and this is also a tuck back behind but I have some 4x6 photo mats in here and a smaller one. But you can tuck back behind here as well. Over here we have two pockets. And the first pocket is right up front. I have some photo mats in here and there's my dog Sissy. <laughs> Hi Sissy! And then we have a very large side pocket again. So we have quite a bit here. And it looks like she's wanting to know what we're doing, so you may see her. <laughs> so coming to our next page, this is magnetic, and we also have a brad, so you can actually move this off to the side. And then these open, place some photos in here, and this is a three-tier pocket. So let's get to the first pocket here. We've got a tag, and I made a folder place some photos in. Here's our next one and I have a large picture mat in there. And then the top one which is deeper and larger photo mat and I was able to get another folder created. And then that just snaps back. Here we left alone so we can just place some photos. Coming to our last pages, we have two side pockets. Here is my first one, and I have like a 5x7 in this. Another picture mat and a tag. Now this is something extra that I added with some of my leftovers. This isn't in the tutorial, but I'll show you this in a minute. This is magnetic, and it's just a very thick folder. Here's our other side pocket, and I just have a couple tags, some larger photo mats in there. So the idea, and I at the end of the tutorial, I kind of tell you what you can do, and I've done this in other tutorials. But what I did was, is I placed a couple magnets right here and here on the back side of this folder. And, I pl and what I did was I matched them up to here, and then I covered it up. But inside here, when you open it up, it gives me a lot of photo placements and I like these folders because you can do magnetic and they will just stick right on your page. And then I just created this little tie here so I can just tie it back up because all I used was one um, pack of magnets in here so I used what was left there. So that is what we will be making today and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Let's move into the materials list. Let's review our materials list for this project. I'm using the Deluxe Collector's Edition of the Graphic 45 Birdsong, and this is the 12x12 12 12 collection. And this comes with the 24 double-sided sheets, two of each design. It also comes with a sticker sheet, as well as, we have a couple sticker sheets here. These two sticker sheets. And there might be a little bit of a glare, so I'm going to kind of hold these up. And then it also comes with the chipboard pieces here. 
And this paper is quite amazing. It's one of their, oh gosh, years and years ago they came out with it and then the Deluxe Collector's Editions, they brought it back. So this is a very pretty paper. It has some gorgeous colors in it. Just what I want for this tutorial. So you're going to need one pack of that. That's plenty for what we're doing. You're going to need two pieces of medium weight 12 by 12 chipboard. And in the pre-cutting list, we'll be cutting these down. You'll want a pack of the American Crafts. And it's the 12 by 12 black cardstock, and it's 80 pound, I believe they say. And you get 25 sheets in this, and that'll be uh, plenty for what we'll be doing. You'll want some Tyvek. We'll need four strips off this, and what Tyvek is is a very sturdy material, and it's what keeps our chipboard covers and spines from separating. You're going to want one sheet of the 8.5 by 11 Crocodile Brown specialty paper. I am going to be using dies in this. And the first one is a newer one by Heartfelt Creation. It's the Rounded Sunlight Window. And that's what you see on the cover of this album in the beginning of this video. And we'll be using it also inside. I am using the frame of card leafy borders. We'll be using this for our borders. If you are not a die cutter, I will help you along. Instead of you having a round wind, uh, round circle on the front, you'll have a square and um, you just won't have the uh, border. You'll just have a strip of your crocodile brown. Unless you have like the EK tools punches, you can always use those too. Flowers and leaves. So for the flowers, I'm using packaged flowers. These are just like a black little rose. We have those. These are our H062. I'm, I think they're called Black Beauties. I'm not sure. But we also have some other black uh, flowers as well. These are just the Tim Holtz. They are the white, white bouquet bunch. A ton comes in a package, so we'll be just clipping off here and there. I will be die cutting some leaves. So if you don't have a die cutter, you don't have to have the leaves. It's just for some accents. The stamp and die for my leaves is the Heartfelt Creations Leafy Accents. Yes. Anyway, the inks that were used uh, was the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. The peeled paint was stamped and blotted onto the leaves. And then I came back over with crushed olives, kind of blotted that on to give like a uh, two-tone um, color on there. So, Other things that you're going to want is of course your glue. I'm using the Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue and I'm, I got the metal tip on there. You'll want a pack of quarter inch and three-eighths inch score tape. You're going to want one pack of the basic gray magnets and these are the larger discs. You're going to want a swing latch, and I'm just using this gold one. Now, if you have a swing latch, but as you can see, this one swings this way. If you have one that swings the other way, it's okay. Either one will work. You're going to want about six brads, about six of these guys. And you'll also want the Tim Holtz ornate plates, and I'll be using one of these, and I'll, I've already gotten into this pack previously, but I'll be using uh, the golder one here. If all you have left is maybe a silver or the little copper, uh, that's fine, it'll work. And this is optional, but I'm gonna be using some string. And uh, this is all I have in my stash. So some string here and there we'll be using. Things that you're going to need as far as tools, you'll need your cutting board, your scoring board, your bone folder or scoring tool, scissors, ruler, possibly your craft knife, and a pencil with an eraser. Let's begin assembling our album. We're 
we're on the assembly of the album, but let's go through our pre-cuts first. So on your pre-cutting list, you would have cut two pieces of your chipboard to seven and one eighth by nine inches. And we call those our covers. You also had a three and a half by seven and one eighth inch piece of chipboard. And that was our left spine. There were a couple more on our chipboard. One was three and a quarter by seven and one eighth, and that was our right spine. And a one and three quarter inch by seven one eighth inch chipboard, and that was our right spine flap. We cut on our black cardstock a nine and one eighth by eleven and a half inch, and we called it an album wrap. We also had a nine and one eighth by twelve inch piece of black cardstock called our album wrap, and you will have a seven and one eighth inch by nine and one eighth inch, and that is our album wrap. We cut five pieces of black cardstock, and they were six and three eighths by nine inches, and these were our inner pages. Now the scoring on this, on each one of these we would have measured over nine sixteenths and then we would have scored on all of these. I know it's kind of an oddball uh, scoring there, but that's what it is. And there's another one there. Okay, then for our inside spine cover, it was a six by six and three eighths. We had a six and three eighths by 10 inch piece of black cardstock. We called it our inside left cover. And then we had our six and three eighths by 11 and three quarter inch inside right cover. Got four pieces of Tyvek. We definitely want our Tyvek. And those are the strange filling material that's very hard to tear and that's what's gonna hold our chipboard pieces from detaching and those were one and a quarter inch by seven and one eighth and we can just put those in a pile with our other pre-cuts and I have a little visitor here sissy she's come to see us so the pieces that I want are my chipboard pieces hello sissy and I'm going to set that off to the side the ones that we're going to work with immediately are the three pieces of our album wrap. So what I would like you to first do is on the left hand side we need our nine and one eighth by eleven and a half inch piece. And what we're going to do, hello sissy. <laughs> She's coming and saying hey what's going on? So we're going to grab our quarter inch score tape and we're just going to take a piece and it's on the 11 and a half inch piece and on the right hand side we're going to lay our score tape here and we can burnish that down you'll want to burnish after every time you lay score tape so that you can make sure you get all the air out from underneath it so that there's no lifting in the future. You'll also want to do that every time you do glue to smooth it out all that glue underneath and uh, make sure no air gets under there. So what I'm going to do right now is grab my paper cutter. I won't be using it to cut but what I will be using it for is that flat edge up here. So I have my nine and an eighth by eleven and a half, and we are nine and one eighth inch going this way. We are eleven and a half inches this way. So the first thing I need to do is remove the score tape backing there. We're going to grab our nine and one eighth by twelve inch, and we are nine and one eighth tall. I'm just going to slide that in there. What I'm doing is using the flat edge up here again to push my paper up against. This one's up against and then that way I can bring this right on top so it's going to be even. Semi-even anyway, as best I can. And I got it a little off. 
Either that or my cut was off. But it doesn't matter. It's all going to get wrapped. The next one is we need our quarter inch score tape again. And now we're going to come to the right side of that 12 inch wide piece. And we will lay a piece of our score tape. Burnish that down really good. And remove the backing. I'm going to push this up against here. Once you get the score tape off your side of your 12 inch, just lap this 7 and 1 8 by 9 and 1 8 inch right on top of it, just like we did on the first piece here. So you should all be connected. And again, we are 9 and 1 8 inch tall. We're going to begin drawing around our chipboard pieces. The first piece that you're going to want is your 1 and 3 quarter by 7 and 1 8 inch piece. That's our right spine flap. And we are working from the left hand side. We're going to place this down. And when you place this down, you're going to be 1 inch in from the side. You'll be about an inch up here and an inch down here. So try to get that as even as you can. Once you think you have it where it needs to be, this is where we're going to draw around our piece. And the reason why we're drawing around it is so once we get the adhesive on here, it'll be easy. We could just place it right in its spot. Grab your ruler. And on that pencil line, what you'll want to do is line the zero or the starting point of your ruler on that pencil mark over here. Measure over a quarter inch and just make a little pencil mark. Grab one of your seven and one eighth by nine inch covers. And we're going to bring that over to the pencil mark. We're going to line that up, making sure we're staying straight here and here and even with the bottom and top of that other drawing there. I think this is pretty straight. And we're going to draw. Alright, I'm going to set that piece off to the side. Lay your ruler down again, matching up your zero with the line over here make a pencil mark at the quarter inch and the one that you're going to want is your three and a half by seven and one eighth inch chipboard now this is the left spine it's very important that the left spine gets placed here and not the other one so we will line that up and we will draw now if you get yours uh, a little bit off, it's okay. This excess here is what's going to wrap around. And even if it is a little off when you're wrapping, um, it does get covered up on the inside, so no worries. Okay, so we're done with this one. Let's grab our ruler. And we'll line it up there. We'll make a mark at the quarter inch. And we're going to grab our other cover piece. And we'll line it up with that line. Trying to stay even here. I think that's about good. And we'll draw. Whoops, we'll draw. Now you're not going to be seeing any of this pencil mark anyway because it does get covered up. Again, we will take our ruler. We'll line it up, make a mark at the quarter inch, and now we want our right spine. This is the three and a quarter by seven and one eighth. And when we place it down, that should give us approximately about an inch or so over there. And we'll draw.
Okay, so we can set this off to the side for right now. What we're going to do is grab our cover pieces and our other pieces, have them handy. Let's begin by applying our score tape to the covers. I'm going to grab my 3 8 inch. I have this one left over from another project, so I am going to use it first. So with this, you're just going to go around the um, outside of your chipboard, staying on your chipboard, and go all the way around like a picture frame. Next what we'll do is we'll go one down the middle and we'll go two on each side of that middle point. We're going to do exactly the same thing for this one. Both your pieces should look like this and we'll burnish, make sure that you burnish down really good. We'll just set that off to the side. What we're going to do is grab our spine pieces and our flap. I'm going to start with my three and a half. That's the largest. So we'll just start off by going all the way around like a picture frame. And we will do the same thing on these. Let's start with the the little flap, this little flap you're going to completely cover and you'll find out later why. The three and a half by seven one eighth, we're going to go one down the middle and we'll go one on either side. The right spine now on this one, what I want you to do is just place one in the middle and then you're going to put two on either side. And you'll find out why, just to make sure that our latch does not lift. That's pretty much why for those, because our latches go on each one of these over there. All right. We have all of these pieces. I'm going to set them off to the side for a moment. I am going to grab the album wrap. The first one is our narrow one that goes in here. And you'll definitely want to make sure that you burnish down really well. And we'll be placing these together. Very easy. Just stick it right on in the little rectangle we drew. Let's grab one of our covers. We're going to remove the score tape backing and we're going to place it in that rectangle. Make sure you leave your space. Now the next one, remember, is our three and a half inch wide. So it's the widest one. Don't put the smaller one there because it will mess up the album. And you'll have to start over that, uh, that spacing. The difference, even though it's minimal, it does make a difference. The next one is this, our large cover. And then we have our three and a quarter inch wide. We'll take off the score tape and we'll place that one. Now that we have all our chipboard pieces down, we're going to flip this over and we're going to burnish really good. Making sure all that score tape, all the air out is out from underneath there. Maybe that's good enough. 
All right. So this is where our front of our album is going to place on the other side. So for now, I'm just going to write front, and this side is the back. It just helps. Let's grab those pieces of Tyvek. And I'll just scoot that right on up. We're going to grab our 3 8 inch score tape. And on each one of these, what we're going to do is place our score tape on the edges and one down the middle. And you'll want to clip off any score tape that might overhang. So here's my first one. We'll burnish that down and we'll do the same with these. I have all four of my pieces covered. Let's start with the first one here. I'm going to remove the backing off that. Now Tyvek is kind of a strange material to work with. It wants to move on you. It wants to crinkle. And if you've got any wrinkles in yours and putting it down, it doesn't matter. It does get covered up. So you see where that first space is here? We're going to lay our Tyvek right over it. And if you do not get exactly straight, so long as you are covered up that, that little area, you'll be okay. Again, this won't show when we're done. It all gets covered. So all we're going to do now is remove the score tape backing off each one of these. And they place right over that spacing. All right, we are ready to start working towards wrapping. Let's do the easiest side. So a lot of times when you do wrap albums, you may get what's called the splits on the end. So what we want to do is try to avoid that. One of the ways we can try to do that is by just helping the paper's fibers loosen up a little. So we're just going to pull in the side, just kind of work it there with your hands a little. Then what you want to do is grab your bone folder and you might want to use the smoother edge and then just kind of move it up against so your paper goes up against the the chipboard then what you can use is the flat side to kind of help like comb it over and it doesn't matter if you use one of these or one of these my preference in burnishing is this tool so we're gonna do the same thing on this side just kind of help it out and then we'll just kind of do our thing here. Okay, so if you do get the splits, um, and I hope I don't, but in case we someone does, um, I can show you what to do as soon as we're done, so don't panic. Um, here is the bottom flap and it's quite large, so we're just going to kind of move in sections to bend that up to help it a little. Otherwise you might tear your paper if you're too rough. All right, and then we'll grab our tool and run it up against the chipboard. And a lot of times where people see the splits is on the seams. And uh, we do have some seams here. So if it does happen, like I said, we'll, uh, we'll tackle that. And we'll flip this around and start working on this little by little. All right, now that we've worked the edges and stuff, this is where we're going to need our scissors. And I'm going to pull this right on over. So. What you're going to want to do, because we want to tuck those edges, is see where the tip, the edge of your chipboard is. Measure out about 1 8 inch and cut at an angle. Now you don't have to be precise on the angle you go. Just try to do a, a nice angle. It does get covered up. Over here. Up here. And over here. Whoops, got everything sticking to me. 
right, I'm going to turn this back around. So on this one, I think what I want us to do is fold in the bottom and the top first, and then we'll do the sides. Let's grab our 3 8 inch score tape and such a large piece. I'm going to go right here, and it's actually on the edge of the chipboard and on the cardstock. But what we want to do is go all the way around our piece, all the way around the inside there. And i got to turn my phone off. I have mine on there all the way around. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way around the outside edge now. All the way around there. And I'll show you what mine looks like. I have mine all the way around, so yours should be looking kind of similar. We'll make sure that we burnish before we do anything. So I'm going to be starting folding up the bottom first. And take all this score tape off. And it doesn't really matter, I'm just going to remove it all. I have mine all in one piece and overlapping, so there it goes. All right, so here we go. Well, all we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom and we're going to push up. Now, you don't want to pull and stretch. You just want to let it flop over there. I like to work mine in sections. And burnish. Turn it around and we'll do the same over here. I'm going to turn this. Now here is my little side. What we're going to do is tuck in the edges. And I'm going to just kind of bring mine up like this. You can take your nail and kind of pinch in the corner like so. Just kind of pull in that corner a little bit. And then once you've done that, it's okay to wrap. And I did not get my corner in very well. So sometimes using your tool is easier. There we go. And then we'll pull up. I like to also use the flat edge of my tool to kind of mash down those edges. We're going to do the same thing over here. And I'm just going to swing this around that edge of the chipboard to get my sides in. And I'll pull it up. And burn it. Grab your 6 by 6 and 3 8 inch spine cover. So what you want to do is make sure, you, because it's a similar, I mean 6 and 6 and 3 8 isn't that far off from each other, you want to make sure that you are 6 and 3 8 inch this way, top and bottom, and you will be 6 inches across. So one way to keep it straight, because once we put it down, it's down, is the 6 and 3 8 I just kind of like to make sure all my tape is going up and down. So that tells me when I put it on, it's going to go like that. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but we definitely want to make sure we have this going the right way. So let's go ahead and, and get our score tape around the outside edges. Okay, again, make sure that you are six and three eighths inch tall in height in front of you. And on this, what we're going to do is line our score tape all the way across next to each other. Because this is the part that goes down on our main spine, and this is what's going to carry our page hinges. And we definitely don't want any of uh, our paper pulling up. So we're just going to get this all on there. 
And also what happens too is the reason why we get the outside edges that flap over past the spine is because when we pull this in we don't want any bubbling up. So let's make sure that we burnish this down, take the time on this. And sometimes you can even hear the air coming out from underneath your paper. Little crinkly sounds. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the score tape backing. And you see where we have our three and a half inch spine. Let me move this out of the way. So here is the front with the small. We have our front cover and here is our three and a half inch. I'm going to be removing the score tape backing and what's going to happen is I am six and three eighths inch tall. And when I place this, I'm going to place this evenly, even overhang on both sides of that spine. So if you need to kind of pull these up just to see where your creases are, you can do that. So just make sure. So, and when we place it again, we want even overhang on each side of that spine. And we also want to make sure that we are, have the even amount of head space up here and here. And we'll be placing this together, but I wanted to tell you in advance so that you can kind of see what's happening here. If you have lotions or oils on your skin, you might want to go wash it off with soap and water. Uh, score tape does not like oils. So, and although it's impossible to keep our fingers out of it, and we have natural oils on our fingertips, um, we need to do what we can do to avoid that. So I'm going to try and get this even, straight across, even overhang and I'm going to place it. Next, we're going to burnish this down really good. Our next piece, and I'm going to put this off to the side here. Our next piece is the 3 8 by 10 inch, and this is our inside left cover. That means that this piece is going to place right here right over the other. And if you notice you were six and three eighths on that middle spine piece, well this is six and three eighths too. So it's all gonna match up nicely. And it will be covering the Tyvek and your edges there. So that's what's going to happen. Let's grab our three eighths inch square tape and we're gonna go all the way around the outside like a picture frame to start. Okay, next we're going to go one down the middle and we're going to go two on each side. Just evenly space those out. Whoops, I got a little farther over than I wanted to. So I am going to put another little piece in there. I'm going to burnish that down. Okay, so this is the front of my cover here. Here is my lineup. So what you're going to do, don't just slap it down there. Look for the edge of your spine cover. You're going to overlap that, I would say, maybe one-eighth of an inch. And you'll keep it going straight, and then you can place it. I don't know if you can hear that little snappy, strange sound. That's the air getting out from underneath my piece here. Okay, we're going to do the same over here. Now this is our inside right cover. It's 6 and 3 eighths by 11 and a quarter. And this is a larger piece. So let's grab our score tape. And we're going to go all the way around the edges like a picture frame. Now on this piece in particular, it actually goes over the spacing area of our Tyvek over here. 
So we do have to put a few more pieces of score tape down to accommodate that so it does not bubble up when we pull up our sides. Okay. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to go one down the middle and we're going to put three on each side. Place your piece down so you can see just how how tall it is. And right there um, on the Tyvek, you can see we're just going to place a little piece here. And we're going to go right in the middle of that little joint area. And right over here. Just don't go down too far or too, too, um, too much. Otherwise, you know, you're going to show. So as long as you keep it... As you can see, if this is lined up with the spine piece, that it's not going to go past that. I've already got score tape here. I just wanted to make sure that that gets covered. So, I'm going to place this now. Ah, get off me. Okay, before you place it again, make sure that you are overlapping and you will overlap on this one probably about a quarter inch, I would say. Just make sure that you are even, you look fairly even everywhere. Place it. And get right over there. Get that air out. All right, it is time to start bending. So place your hand over here to the left, place, place your other one underneath, hand down and slowly pull in. If you see any bubbling, you can kind of use the soft edge of your, or your rounded edge and get down better. Pull that up. We're gonna move over to our next one and we'll pull that up. We'll move over here and we'll pull that up. And then over here, we can pull that up. And if you've missed spots, you will know. <laughs> there we go. So your album, what's going to happen is when we close it, bring it together, our latch is going to be over here on the side and it will overlap and it should overlap almost directly in there. So, and it gives us a little room with that spine there too. Okay. All right, so in order to keep us straight, because this does get covered with decorated paper, I'm gonna write front just so that you can see what's happening. Here's that short little flap, and this would be the back cover. Just like that. Okay, let's get our inner pages in. We had one, two, three, four, five inner pages, and we scored them all at 9 sixteenths. All we're gonna do now is just fold on those score lines on each one. I have all my pieces here and this is real simple and I'm going to show you before we do it. And also we will be reinforcing these hinges as we get into the tutorial. And when we have heavier, by the time we're done, some of these papers are pretty heavy. And although this is a good adhesive and a good hinging system, it's always a good idea when you're working with very heavy laden papers with your fold outs and everything to reinforce those spines. And I'll show you as we get into the tutorial, like I said, to uh, do that. So what we're going to do is we've created an L shape hinge and our sticky is back here. What we're going to do is remove that score tape backing and again this is my front with the shorter spine up here and this is our main spine that carries the weight of our pages. So if you were to pull this straight up 
remove the score tape backing. You will notice that if you place this and just bring it all the way up against this piece here, slide it right on up, you can line this up with the top and bottom of your inside spine paper that we laid. That's why we lay that as well, is to help line us up. So I'm going to do this really quick and take that off. So my sticky is back down underneath that. I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to slide that and try to get that even with the top and bottom of that spine piece. And that's all there is to this. And we burnish really good. And for me, so that this does not confuse anybody, if you happen to take a break and come back, you don't see things that are upside down thinking I'm working upside down. So the next one, I'll be removing the score tape backing. And all you do with this is you slide it right up next to that other, your other page. You line it up top and bottom and you press. And they should all fall in line. So we'll just place that. It's down. And we burnish. Get all that air out from underneath. And again, I'm going to erase that. Let's move on. We're going to start setting the rest. And all of these are done the same exact way. Just put that right on up next to it. Line it up. And press. <clears throat> and excuse the noise in the background. That is my Roomba vacuuming. I have him set to vacuum every day. I have two dogs and a cat, so in order to keep the house clean and the hair under control, I do have to run him. And we're going to set our last page just the same way. And it will give us a larger space here in the back than the front, and that is absolutely fine for what we're doing. So here is our album with our pages all nice and spaced. Alrighty, we are now on to decorating the outside of the album. And at that point, once we get our paper on, that is when we put on the latch. So let's move on. We're ready to start decorating the outside of our album. But let's take care of something really quick. And that is, in your paper pack, you will notice that each one of your sheets has this little trim piece. So what I'd like you to do is, on each and every one of these papers, I want you to trim off that trim piece. That's going to save us a lot of time throughout this tutorial. And um, instead of stopping at each page and me telling you to take off the trim piece. So let's do that really quick. You can throw all your trim pieces that we cut off into the garbage. And I'm going to turn this phone on vibrate so it doesn't disturb us. In your paper pack, you will find two of these prints. And on the back, it's the fans. We're going to be using this. Now, first thing, if you are new to my tutorials, you would have had a bunch of leftover pre-cut black cardstock. You'll keep that in a pile, and we call that our scrap pile or reserves. And we, we do grab from there from time to time into our reserves for black cardstock for things that are not on the pre-cutting guide. Also, once we are done cutting on any decorative paper, you'll put that in a separate pile, which is our reserves as well, because we may need to get back in it to grab some scrap pieces, whether it be small, large, whatever. 
And another thing is so that it's easier for everybody to follow along, I will have you start measuring. I start over here from the left and I tell you to measure over this way. So instead of having you measure down, top, bottom on decorated paper, it kind of gets all over the board. So I try to stay consistent. So we have these two pieces here and we're looking at them. What I want you to do is looking at them both like this, the way they're supposed to be, we're going to turn it so now this print is sideways. And the reason why is because I'm going to tell us to measure over this way. And it just keeps us consistent is all. So on both of these, I'm going to double mine up because they're both going to be the same exact. We're going to measure over seven inches and cut. And for a few of these cuts, I'm going to drag this out so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to line this up with my seven inches and I'm going to cut. Now this leftover piece here, this we're going to just stick in our reserves for right now. Okay, so this is what we have. We're going to double these up. And we're going to measure over 9 and 1 8 inch and cut. By 9 and 1 8 inch. And I'm going to cut these two pieces. Let's just put those in our reserves for right now. So now you can kind of see um, how it is I, I do with the cutting since we're cutting a bunch of our decorated paper throughout the tutorial. So grab one of these. If you notice, and I'm looking at the front because it has a smaller one, if you place this down, you can center it in there and that's going to give us a nice little black border, side to side, top and bottom. The same is true for this back here on the back of our, of our piece. So what I want you to do is here's our front. What we're going to do is just hold our album and flip it. So here's the front. It's going to be easier for us. And for the front on this piece, I like to use score tape. And we can also get our other piece because we'll do pretty much the same. I'm going to grab my quarter inch for this. The first thing we're going to do on each one of these pieces is go around like a picture frame. We are applying the score tape to the side with the fans on this. And what we'll be doing the same on this one here in a moment. So all we're going to do is lay one right down the center there. And since we're using the quarter inch and this is such a wide piece, we're going to go one, two, and we'll put two spaced out on the other side of that middle point. So that is what it should look like. Let's do the same on this one. I'm going to set one off to the side here. They are completely identical. So what's going to happen is I'm going to remove the score tape. I'm going to make sure I'm looking at my piece the way it needs to go. And then the reason why I had you spread this out is so that it is easier to burnish. So when we place this, we're going to be even, 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 and even. If it's easier for you to have your album shut, then you can do it that way too. I just thought it might be a little bit easier to burnish down. So I'm going to remove my score tape back in here. I'll just place mine right there. And I will burnish that down really good. Especially along the edges and that corners and stuff. Okay, I'm going to slide this. And now here's the back piece. Let's remove the score tape and place this. And I'm going to try and make sure I'm, I have the same amount. from. I didn't measure, but to try and keep it all even there. And for sure clip off any overhang of score tape that you might have. So let's place this one. So 
So now we have our front cover and our back cover. Let's work on the wide main spine piece. In your reserves, you will find this long piece. It's 12 inches by 5 inches. We're going to turn it, looking at it like this, sideways. We're going to measure over 7 inches and cut. This is what you should have. We're just going to turn it like this. We're going to measure over 3 and a half inches and cut. After making that cut, you should have this piece, the wider one we're working with. This one, put that in your reserves. And we're going to do the fans over here to give us some different color. And it's going to look nice. So let's flip that down. Let's grab our quarter inch score tape. The first thing that we're going to do is go all the way around our piece like a picture frame, like we've been doing. We're going to go one down the middle and one on each side. I'm going to remove the score tape backing and what's going to happen is here's my front, here's my main spine. I'm going to remove it and I'm going to center it in there side to side, top to bottom, and the top should be even with the top of your front here. And you'll have your black cardstock border all the way around it. And burnish. That looks good. Now let's get our pieces for over here. Grab your other 5 inch by 12 inch piece. We're going to measure over 7 inches and cut. We are 7 inches this way. So our first cut is we're going to measure over 1 and 3 quarters inch and cut. These are the two pieces that you would have, and they're the perfect size for what we need. So what we're going to have to do is on one side of this, and we will do this together, we're going to be placing it on this side. We're first going to go all the way around this piece like a picture frame. And we're going to need a little extra score tape because our latches are going to place over this. Alright, for this one, what we're going to do is, because just to make sure, is we are just going to lay our score tape all the way across on this one. Make sure we don't have any issues. So I have about four pieces on the inside of the little frame. This one, so one down the middle there. And that should be fine, I'm thinking. Let's see. Let me just double check myself. We might have to go all the way over. Oop. Let's just be safe, just in case. Place another one in there. Let's just keep make sure that stays down. So let's just cover those. All right, here is right here. And I'm going to place this. Better safe than sorry, just in case we get these on wrong, uh, in the wrong place. Okay, so here's the smaller one. I'm going to try and line it up with the top of the other and center it down in there. I'll burnish that down in a moment. This one, same thing. We're going to place it right on in that space, giving us a little black border, top, bottom, and you should have one on right on the side too there. Looks pretty even. 
And now I'm going to burnish that really good. So let's take a look. So this is going to be the side with our latch. I think that looks pretty good. All right, first thing I want you to do is after we, uh, grab your ruler, after we wrap the spine and, and our piece, notice that this once was three and a half inches wide, our chipboard. Now it's going to be something a little different after the wrap. So place your ruler down from corner, you will want to shut your album, corner to over here. I am almost three and three quarters now. So with that, what I'm going to do, and you may want to grab a binder clip, is over here, and you're going to have a little gap here for some space. I want you to get your book until it is three and three quarters inch wide, and I am about right there, and that should bring me center. And what I'm going to do is place my album down, make sure that those are both down straight my sides and I moved so make sure and now you can use your binder clips you can use your clamps what I'm going to do is make sure that this stays where it needs to stay this is where we're going to be getting our little swing latch out and you're going to want a pencil with a sharp tip and I'll need to sharpen mine up here And you're going to need that little bit of chipboard that was on your pre-cutting guide. It said save your scraps. Okay. What you're going to want to do is grab one of your pieces and just cut a piece off. We're going to be uh, chopping this down. Mine's about one inch wide. We'll chop that down. What this is going to be ended up being is our shim. It does not matter if you swing to the right or the left, I think I told you that. Place your little latch in your hole of your other side and place it down. Notice that because this overlaps, it is going to be slightly taller than this side. That is why we need the shim. Okay, so what I'd like you to do while you have it up here is and it might be easier once you have it up there to kind of center your latches in between that middle point. And I'm going to remove this one now. And I'm going to draw a line next to that latch to get right on my thing. Now, it's right next to the black uh, the black card stock. That's all I need right now is for that. This piece I know is going to be fine once I place it on the pencil mark. This one, if I slide it back, and you're gonna to wanna to be centered somewhere in there. Your latch, kind of line them up. And once you have this little guy, you can do it on the other side, just a little line there. So that you know the spacing that it's needed. Hope that made sense. All right, this piece here. First thing that we're going to do is make this easy is just lay this piece down on a piece of your chipboard. Okay, let's draw around it. And we can trim this off, we can erase anything that shows. Okay, we got our draw around it. Now on the inside, I want you to use your pencil and color in that whole place. So now you should have something that looks like this. If you have heavy duty punch that'll get through your chipboard, you can punch through this to make it your life easier. If not, use your craft knife. Find that hole. And your scissors, if you have some regular large scissors, should be able to get through the chipboard. But I am just going to cut around as best I can on that pencil line there. Now you may have a different technique for doing this, but for me this is what I do. Okay, we're going to apply some glue. Now this is going to take a moment for this to dry. 
this is uh, our little backup. Make sure you can get see through your holes. While this is drying, you can actually verify that this is going to work for you. So if you place this back through the hole and right here, you may need a second shim. So measure to see if you need a second shim underneath there to help. And I think I might do a second one just because I think it'll be easier. Pop that up just a little bit. So again, I'll place it down on another piece of that chipboard. I'm going to draw around it. Whoops, I'm all over the board there. Color in the center. Use your craft tool or some snips here, some hole punchers. I like this EK tool one because um, it gets through the chipboard very easily. Okay, before you glue, make sure, just kind of stick that shim underneath the other. Don't glue it yet. Place your piece, your little hook through there, and see if that's a better fit. Two shims is best for me. It, it fits more flatter. Okay, so I'm going to glue these two together. And once it dries, and I should wait till it dries, I can always clean up around this. All right, so we see where our side line to the to the right, your your little shim goes, and we know over here. Now I drew mine a little little lower than the other, but I do know that it's going to go right here. And I'm going to stand up and make sure I can, that I'm looking on it the way it should be and that looks pretty good to me so I'm going to remove this one and hold it there in place as best you can draw your little circle marks in the holes there no so I got one dot here one dot here I'm going to verify that looks good. Okay, I'm going to line up my holes over here, what I just did. Make sure it's straight. Find your other line. That is where I need to be. If you need to draw around it so that you can do, do so. For me, I think I need to be here and here. And a pin might be helpful with that too. Okay, so my little chomper thingy will not get all the way through there. So you can use your craft knife to make the holes. Or if you have one of these, you can use that. So I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to line up my holes with those pencil marks. one. Oh, it's hard to see pencil on this. I think that's two right there. Whoops, I got mine way off. That's going to be a problem. What was I thinking? It's mine. But I can't see with the lighting here. So I am going to go darker and I am going to fix that hole which is easy enough it happens the, one of the things I want to say though if you are working on an album and you make an error like this seems major I just put a big hole in my thing I'm not going to panic because everything can be covered up and it will be by the time I'm done I have this piece in my reserves and I'm just going to cut it down to fit through the side and I'm going to glue it down on over 
and problem solved. It happens. No biggie. Okay, let's see how I did here. I am going to be grabbing my brads at this point, and I need to clip these now. Make sure I do it right in that hole. And if you need to adjust your hole, then do so. So the side with the shim is going to be uh, is going to be where these barely go through because these are barely going to go through as it is. Okay, this we're going to apply glue to this little latch here. This is the one that goes on the small side. And I'm going to open this up. Place this right on there, make sure I'm straight. And that's where we're going to slip these through now. Two brads. And that's going to help it when it's gluing down as well. Alright, I got this down. And now what I'm going to do, I'm on the back side here. I'm going to twist these so these are straight up and down and then I will glue these down when I'm ready to get my paper covering on over that. And make sure you press in that brad so you can get a good tight fit as best you can. So that's on the inside and this is the outside. So this is where we're going to have to measure our width again to make sure we put this in the proper place. And this is also where you can fix or adjust just in case your holes are just a little bit off. And I'm going to go with my original there. I got two shims. Place this. And it looks like it's going to work perfectly for me. So I'm going to swing that side up. This is where the glue comes in on the shim and then we use our brads. And I am going to keep this and I'm going to stand up so I can see. I've got two more brads here. And I'm going to slip these through those holes. There we go. Unlatch that now. I'm going to press I'm going to keep my hand over here because it's going to help me. Now notice we barely have anything poking through and that's okay as long as you can get a little bit through or just a smidgen through and to push back those you're going to be fine plus our glue is going to help us. So this isn't completely dried but let's latch and you should be latching and even. Woohoo! We are through that. That looks good. Alright, so here is our front, our sides, and I'm going to stay latched because it helps a little bit with what I'm going to be doing here and holding it up so you can see. I am going to work first with the die cutters so that they can get their piece ready to go. I am in the rounded sunlight windows. This has nine pieces in it. The biggest one is right on the outside. This big hoop. Place it on a piece of your black cardstock and run it through your die cutter. If you are not die cutting, hang tight because I have a couple options for you. Die cutters, this is what you should have. And your circle is about six inches wide. Those of you that are not die cutting, what you'll want to do is you can either do a six inch by six inch square and then on your front with your decorative paper you'll have a square as well to go over it. And we'll, we'll get to that point when we're ready to go. 
Your second option is to get a circle. Now one thing, and don't laugh, is I have salad bowls that are six inches wide. And what I did was I went over here and I measured and even if you're only five and seven eighths wide, it's fine. Okay, even at five and three quarters you could go. So I'm gonna grab a piece of black cardstock and I'll show you how to do this. Let me cut a piece. The bowl method, if you have one, even Tupperware, the mouth of a Tupperware might be close enough. You'll just lay it down. And in this instance, I have kind of a wavy edge and that's okay too. So just make sure I'm in there where it should be and draw. And you would cut that out. You, you'll want to make a second one on your black cardstock to use as a pattern. So what I'm going to do, even though I have the die, I want to make sure that everyone kind of stays together and I'm going to do this as well. And mine is a wavy <laughs> and um, I'm just going to try and keep this as straight, just kind of bypass my little waves if I can. So just try to cut it out as evenly as you can. What you can do, now you'll want to do this on your pattern one, not the one that you're going to place on the book, is just fold this directly in half. Okay, then you can flip it over and see where it needs to be even. At least that's how I would do it. And I've had to do circles before in the past, so I just kind of do the best I can. And chances are you won't be able to tell any imperfections. Hopefully not, but I don't think so. So that's what your pattern, this will be your template. Once you get a good fit, then you can cut out your round circle. Okay, you'll want to keep this in half. Um, your template because you're going to be using the half sides later on. Okay, so let's review. If you are not cutting a circle or doing a circle by hand, okay, you will cut a six by six inch. Your circle should be approximately six by six as well. And I did pretty good on that. Okay. Now, let's get into, if you need to pause the video, do so. Let's get into our decorated paper of what's going to happen. And I'm going to keep my template right on over here. And die cutters, we're not done with these yet. This is for everyone. Pull this sheet out of your paper pack. On the back, it looks like this. The first thing we're going to do is measure over seven and a half inches and cut. This is what you should have so far. Now what I'd like you to do is turn your sheet like this, measure over eight inches and cut. This piece will go in our reserves. I'm going to start out with the die cutters. Grab your ring, bring it all the way down to the bottom and over to the side of your piece. Okay, so I'm going to bring it down. Now one thing that they don't give you is an inside ring to cut this out. So once you are down you can shimmy it up a little bit right until I can see the black lettering up here show up under that ring. Now what we're going to do is draw a circle. Lightly because we can just in case we need to erase. Okay, so die cutters, what we will do is we will cut out using this as our stencil out and around this. If you cut a six by six inch square, what you're going to do is you are gonna cut this down to five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths to make this a square so you get her into the square. 
if you did this method by cutting it, what you're going to do is the same thing. Just keep it like this. Bring this over. Kind of look to make sure you're, you're good. Probably bring it all the way down to the bottom since you're drawing over to the side. But you will then draw out and around this and cut it out. And when you cut it out, go cut it on the inside of your pencil line. So I am going to start cutting. And die cutters, you'll want to cut on your line. So those are options. And we, those of you that made your little template, we are not done with that. So just everyone do the best you can. Here's the thing. By the time we're done, if you're a little wavy or not perfect on your circle, because I know mine won't be. I just don't have the steady hands for this. Um, it's going to be okay. No one's going to be able to even notice that. Uh, I doubt they will by the time we're done doing what we need to do. And I know it's like I'm like grandfather time here. I, uh, I have to go slow. And I know it's still not. It's going to work though. As good as it's going to work. All right, my leftovers, these are great little scratch pieces, and I even have one of these left over to use. So I am going to re erase any pencil lines that I can see. Die cutters, what you're going to do is before you apply glue, you're going to verify that you are centered. You will apply glue and center that right on in there, center top, bottom, and you will have this. Those of you that did the square, when you place yours in, you should have black showing around yours. Okay, and then everyone who did this, if you cut on the inside, you should have a little bit of black showing. If you want to cut yours down more, you can. So let's all glue this down. Okay, do not glue this down to your piece yet. Let's just stick this off to the side. In your paper pack, you will find this beautiful print. It has tags and it's this color. So what I want you to do is turn it so you're looking at it like this with the red and the black right like that. Measure over three inches and cut. This is the piece that you are going to want to work with. Now I am going to work with the die cutters first. So what you're going to want to do is in the die set you'll get the half circle and you'll get these three window pieces. What you're going to do is place this down and you'll want to bring it over to the left because you're going to need to die cut it again. Grab the middle blade and you can place that all the way down until it's at the bottom down there. This one and this one. So just kind of center it on in there and maneuver it so you have the same um, little paper showing in your, your little circle there. And you'll die cut it and then you'll die cut yours again. If you did the square square piece for this you're going to cut two rectangles out of this I'll put that out of the way your two rectangles should be two and five eighths by five and a half so this 12 inch would if you need to help yourself so you don't actually cut into something you can divide it but you your two rectangles are two and five eighths by five and a half and I also have uh, a tip for you for getting um, some since we're going to have holes in ours if you did this method so we got three options here all you'll want to do is just take this you're going to want to go a little bit smaller there, so a half inch. So come in a half inch 
with the tip of this and just pull it so it's straight. You have even, even, and then you will draw yours. And you'll do it twice, one here and then one over here. Bring it in a half inch and then you'll have to cut yours out. I hope that makes sense. I just got done die cutting mine. Now, what you'll want to do, die cutters, and then I will get to everyone else, because I have a uh, tip that you might want to try. Die cutters, your, your piece here, just lay these down. And what you'll do is, you see where you have your top and bottom there? All you're going to do is center this piece and just get enough to where it is coming out the side evenly. So you'll want to push that in so you can't see um, the top and bottom of your side pieces. And once you know where that is going to place, you will glue down all your pieces. Those of you that did the rectangle, and I'm going to grab a piece of black cardstock to show you. Okay. Those of you that did the square method, you would be six by six with your black cardstock, and you would have this in the middle, and this is supposed to be a square. Okay. What you will do is you will take your red decorated paper that you cut at two and five eighths by five and a half, those two pieces, and they're supposed to be red decorated paper, and you would have your this would have been five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths, so you'll have a little bit of black showing. And what you're going to do is slightly bring in those sides to where you look like this. And you'll want to center top to bottom between the overhang there. Now before you do any gluing down, let me grab something because I want to show you something you can do. As well as the people who used this and cut their circle. To get some circles and uh, you won't have window frames what's so uh, you won't have window frames like this because you don't have the die. But try this out and I'm going to show you using your template here for those that have the curve. Okay. You'll want to use a round, a uh, larger one than what you used for the latch. That one was a small one. So what you might want to do is, is bring this in and kind of eyeball this to where, or you can bring it all the way in, but I would say like you can go in, like line it up with the side of your paper and come in maybe a half inch and you can punch a hole. Now to get another hole in there the same, you would line up the side of your thing with the side of your hole, come in again about a half inch. And what you can do is keep moving over using the side of this as your guide to keep you even in between. Move in a half inch and then by the time you're done you would have that all the way around on your piece. Okay. Those of you that did this you could do the same. Take your larger, if you have a hand punch, bring it in about a half inch, move it all the way over the bar to the side of your rectangle and here's your long side, that's the side that you would be pump punching. Line it up, come in maybe a half inch, even a quarter inch, whatever it is that you want to do and punch and then you do the same thing, line it up, punch, line it up and I'm not being very even but you can punch a straight line of holes. And if it's easier for you, you can like measure in, it's easier for you, like measure in where you're supposed to be a uh, half inch or so. Draw that line with your pencil so you know how far in you want to come so that you can stay straight. So that is an idea for you. Otherwise, just glue your panel down so I'm going to get mine down, and I think that's good there. All right, the crocodile brown paper. Here is our crocodile brown paper, 
and this is eight and a half by 11 inches. So looking at it like this, and we are 11 inches tall, measure over one and three eighths inch and cut. So this is what you should have, looking at it like this, measure over nine and one eighth inch and cut. Die cutters. I am in the from a card leafy borders and you want the largest bracket. And what you're going to do is place this down on your die cutter. Make sure you are even side to side and right there in the middle. And you will die cut that. Do not cut in at an angle, just leave it alone. So let's do that. Those of you that, are, uh, that have uh, decorative punches, you can punch along one side and then you can glue it down to the front. If you have nothing at all, what you will want to do is apply glue to this and just glue it down right to the bottom and we can add some of our strips from our sticker sheet. Okay, If you do not like this thick of a border, those of you that are not die cutting, you can trim this down to three quarters of an inch just to have a little bit of brown or not. So now I'm going to go die cut my piece. Die cutters, I am going to apply glue to the back and I'm going to have it to where it looks like this when I glue that down. On your sticker sheet, you will find this very long piece of black. And that is going to place, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of a lip with my Crocodile Brown paper. And try to get this evenly side to side, and I will snip it so that it this. Now one thing about the stickers is you may want to add a little bit of glue, especially on this paper. So It will help it stay down. And I will wipe up any excess glue. Also on your sticker sheet you will find this, and this is optional. If you do not want to place it, you don't have to but it goes down right there with the scallops pointing down. I am going to apply some glue here to help it down. And I will place this. And I will trim it when I am done. and I will clean up any glue. Okay, we're going I need to let mine dry. So the hard part is done. Let's get some string. I have some string and all I did was wrap it back and forth. I have a loop here and some loop down here just until I had just a little bit of overhang um, over the top and bottom. Now this might be a good time to get out a hot glue gun just to put a dab to hold you down. But um, I'm just going to go right about here, put a dab, just to keep me in place. And where it's going to come and hit is somewhere between the black cardstock and the side over there. And I'm going to bring it up and just enough up here to keep me down. And then I'll wrap to the other side. Okay, I'm going to unlatch this now. Now this is where uh, your hot glue may show up on the inside. So if you would like to use your wet glue or your fabric tack, whatever you have, just to bring this down in here. We can always fix 
uh, we can always fix what's up here with a trim or whatever. So and I am going to go with hot glue. Just a dab. Just bring me over like that. And then these down here. Because you can always cover up things. Where's that glue gun? Just a little. And be very careful with the hot glue gun. I'm using a low temp because it seems to not blister me. So that's what I got on the inside. Now I'm going to get this latched again. Okay, on your chipboard pieces, you will locate this one right off here. Joy and luck. We'll need that. Also, create a bow with your string, and I did two, uh, two together and did it like that. So we're going to need those. I have a bunch of the white bouquet flowers. And I have one of my black flowers and one set of leaves. And again, the leaves are optional, okay? And you can slide these right underneath here. And I think that's what we're going to do. But before you glue down your leaves underneath your uh, string, I want you to place this and look at it. Then you can uh, add glue. But if you have leaves, you can place it like this, okay? This piece will go right here with the bow on top. And then you'll just kind of, and you can move your bow up more, you'll just kind of have to place your, and hot glue might be good for this, is to glue that down to the top of this so you can still see Joy and Luck. And then this one right here. And you can still kind of see the ribbon here. And you can always move that ribbon up on top so that it kind of looks like that. So I'm going to get started, and if you'd like to watch first the placement, you can. But just uh, look at it first, lay your pieces down to kind of get an idea what it's going to look like. That's always a good idea. That's what I do. And I'll slide this back underneath. I'm going to do some quick tacking here with this. Just kind of stick it down. I did have a string bow. Here it is. I'll do that in a moment. Get these down. And then this will go over to hide the little stem. And then here's my bow. And you can make a bigger bow if you'd like. Right here. I'm just going to use a little hot glue to get that down. So let's take a look. So there is my cover. We're going to need our Tim Holtz frame and for this I am using the rectangle opening rather than the the large one. There is tranquility right here and if you were to place that right behind it will hide the the uh, rest of it and that's what I'm going to use. Here is the thing. If you have the rounded one, what you can do, because this, I don't think that this is going to fit behind, but let's see. Maybe it will. Yeah, it will just fit behind. You might be able to see a little bit. When you put that down on the paper, I think it'll be okay. So let's grab that. Let's grab our thing. 
So those of you that have that know what to do, but just kind of eyeball what you're doing here is kind of, I'm going to stand up so I can see. On your spine, you're just going to want to put it so where it is centered between. So I'm just going to kind of put that right there. I'm trying to get this on even, guys. <laughs> so that is down, and this is going to place over. Now for this, it's going to take a moment for us to let this dry. And let's see what it looks like with this before I glue down my thing. I think it'll look okay. And it will. Alright, I'm going to get this. I'm standing up right now because I definitely have to. And I'll just press that down so it stays down. And I'm not going to put any brads over here. It doesn't really need it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is set this off to the side. It needs to dry. So I'm just going to leave my album up on end and prop it up against something. And when we come back, we will then be moving on to the inside to page one. Oh, and really quick, um, I said I would go over in case you got the splits. Really quick, what you can do is if you, and I'm going to just do this, I don't have the splits, but let me see, where is one of my seams? I just want to hold that, make sure it stays. Here's a seam. Now, I didn't get the splits on my seam, but if you did, or somewhere else, what you can do is dab a little bit of your white glue, just like that, okay? Use your finger to get that back down, okay? That's what you can do. Now, if it is severe, your split is severe, what you can do is wrap a lace, a really thin lace, over the top edges and the bottom edges or wherever you have it. So, oh, I got my spine piece on crooked, but I don't think it's going to matter here. All right, so that definitely, now that I'm done fooling around with twisting it around, I need to let it dry. So we will resume probably about 10 minutes. I'm going to go grab me a cup of coffee while this dries.